Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay. My blog is toddytalkscrafts.com and that's where you'll find the written out pattern for the Clancy Comfort Bear, which is what this particular Comfort Bear is. Now I've been making Comfort Bears for more than 20 years. My first one was in response to 9-11 when I saw the planes flying into the towers and I thought I need to do something to comfort people. So I designed little crocheted comfort bears, and ever since then I have, oh gosh, I have knitted, woven, crocheted um, uh, more than, oh, th thousands of uh, comfort bears, and, and I invite people to join me in making comfort bears. This latest iteration is a, uh, a knitted comfort bear, and this uh, comfort bear is in honor of my uh, beloved late son-in-law Clancy who um, who passed away recently and um, so this is uh, in memory of him and a legacy of him he was kindness incarnate and people felt that about him and they would tell him um, you know things that were a problem or something that they were sorrowful or suffering and he um, he really connected with the comfort bears and as a man of action he felt that actions do speak louder than words and so he would uh, keep at least three comfort bears in his pocket as well as his own personal one and would give them to people uh, to as just a little bit of comfort and compassion and so I always kept him supplied with them. He'd say, Mom, I need more comfort bears. And so that was that was a special thing we shared. And so I'm inviting you to join in uh, that process of uh, creating something small, something precious that gives people the feeling of being loved and cared for. Because, boy, the last couple of years, whew, they've been tough. So... The pattern, like I said, um, is on my blog, the written out pattern. And I'm going to show you a video for how to make the Clancy version. It's, it's, it's a different version than um, the previous knitted iterations. Um, it does have my signature um, hugging arms because I just think it's so important for us to get those hugs. And um, the all of the now these bears they're all knitted from the same pattern. But when you use um, thicker yarn and larger needles, you get a larger comfort bear like this one, knitted from fur type yarn um, on uh, gosh I guess it was size eight millimeter needles, and these teeny little ones uh, were knitted with 3.5 millimeter needles and uh, sock yarn. Mostly though I like to use um, worsted weight yarn, number four medium yarn and uh, 0.5 millimeter, no not 0.5, 5 millimeter uh, knitting needles. You can use straights, DPNs, circulars, whatever you like the best. Um, make them any color you like, any color combination you like. Now, the um, I often make um, bears in uh, blue, and I call them the blue bears of happiness. And, of course, polar bears, brown bears. Um, the panda bears. The panda bears are the same pattern as the regular Clancy Comfort bears, but... They are woven, not woven, knitted in stripes. You are uh, uh, all the pattern, uh, no matter which bear you're making, they all start at the feet and they're knitted up to the head. And so um, I, I, I'll explain completely in um, as the video progresses how um, that, uh, how the bears are made. But you, um, for the pandas it's six uh, stockinette rows of black two of white two of black and then six for the head and then the accoutrements are done all in black so that is 
this is the Clancy Comfort Bear. Now what I like to do, because I like to be able to um, knit my Comfort Bears on the go, and so I make uh, I make up um, a, 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 like basically a, a, a traveling um, kit almost with all the things I need in it so I can then stick the, all those bits and pieces into a bag so that I can be working on my Comfort Bears um, when I'm out and about. And so in the next segment, I'm going to show you how I put together that traveling kit of all the stuff you need to knit the Comfort Bears. So let's get started. So this is um, what you need for your knitting your Comfort Bears. You need yarn and this is a number four medium weight worsted weight uh, acrylic yarn. I think it's got some wool in it too. You can use hand spun yarn. Um, gosh, anything you like. Uh, you'll need um, knitting needles that match your yarn. Um, with the worsted weight yarns, I use a five uh, millimeter needle. You need um, row counters. And I like to um, be uh, able to have all most of the things that I need in like a pencil box or kit uh, that then I just put in a small knitting bag. This is stuffing and so that keeps the stuffing contained or on the go. Now in the um, in my little pencil box I have thread snips um, various uh, extra crochet hooks. These are felting needles that are really handy for um, just doing a bit of shaping or to lock down stitches. So those are handy. You need crochet hooks um, of various sizes for um, making the arm because the arm um, needs to have that little bit of stretch so it can go over the thumb or finger of the person that the bear is giving a hug to. So that's your crochet hooks. Uh, is six uh, backslash zero um, millimeter, uh, not six millimeter, but they're six uh, oh, um, black glass beads for the eyes. And then I use uh, black sewing machine thread for sewing the eyes on and for doing the nose and mouth. And you do need, of course, a needle that will go through your um, through your beads. So I, I carry thread. Usually I put it uh, on a bobbin so that it'll fit into my kit. Um, so you need a, a bobbin of whatever color bears you're working on, um, as well as the black. And um, a tape measure. Here's a bobbin of thread and some black embroidery floss. And then you'll also need um, craft needles, darning needles, or tapestry needles. And you'll need um, four uh, small safety pins to mark rows uh, that will show you your shaping. And I always like to carry a small notebook and pen or pencil to make notes while I'm out and about. And I have a little pair of magnifying glasses just in case I need a little bit of help. Um, if something is, needs to be examined closely. Okay, I think that I've got everything there. Um, everything is listed in the pattern, so that's all um, that's on the pattern, which is on Toddy Talks Craft. And that link I'll post at the end of the video and also in the notes below. Okay, so I'm going to clear this away and then we'll get started. I have already knitted um, the body and head of the and legs of the uh, Clancy Bear. Now, when I am knitting, the bear, what I like to do is I like to place um, a safety pin, a little brass safety pin on uh, at uh, in, uh, to mark off two of the rows. Now you start your um, you start your bear at the feet end. So you cast on 11 stitches 
and then you work in straight stitch for or stockinette stitch for six rows then that's the legs so place a pin at each end of the sixth row so work four more rows knit one row purl one row knit one row purl one row and then that's you'll place a pin at each end and that's for the body then uh, work six more rows and that's for the head then take your craft or tapestry needle and fold your yarn over and push the fold through the um, eye of the needle and now you're going to take the needle and slip the stitches off of the knitting needle onto the, the craft needle. I'll just move those out of the way and let's see if I can pull back a bit there. So now pull up to gather the top of the head and I'm going to take the needle through those stitches one more time just to secure that gather. Okay, so that goes through, pull up. Now, the thing that's different about the Clancy Bear from all the other comfort bears that I've ever designed is that the Clancy Bear, in order to have these cute little legs, all the other comfort bears have kind of unibody. Not all, there's some crocheted ones with with uh, separate legs. Um, but you can see you get that nice separated leg rather than the legs being stitched together. So the, the legs are down here and the head is here. And in order to have the legs come out in the correct configuration, the uh, center front has to be where the seam is. So it's going to be a matter of working the from the from the gap, the space between the two edges, from one side to the other, and you'll stitch back and forth, pulling up quite firmly to close that seam back and forth until you get to the first set of pins which are the chin of the of the or the neck of the little bear so work right up this is why you place your pins at both ends of that row so that you know for sure you're working into the end of the correct row so I'll just slip that pin off and pop it over there and bring it through and now I'll come through the second end of the head. Now what I'm going to do is grab um, some stuffing I'm going to stuff that little noggin so that that head is going to be nice and round and go up and I'll go around once, twice and then over the wraps And now I'm going to take the um, take the needle up to the top of the head and see how the ears are placed just outside that ring of gathering and there's one to each side of the center so you're kind of keeping an eye on your center there 
and grab your crochet hook or your needle either one is fine and now I'm going to hold it so that I've, I've turned to the side now and I'm going to stitch over once and twice for the first ear. I pull the needle almost all the way out and I pop the tapestry needle in and I'm going to stitch over those two loops to make the ears the first ear. Then I will go in and make the next ear. Again, I'm going to the I'm going to turn so that the uh, center front is facing my hand and I go once twice. Now with a worsted weight yarn twice is enough. With a thinner yarn you might want to make three stitches over your knitting needle or the end of the crochet hook. And then I go over those loops again to make the the ear. So now you're going to go into the head and come down out at the shoulder. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it is in the pattern, but I should have mentioned it. I cut when I uh, finished my knitting of the body, I cut the yarn end off uh, 40 inches long or one meter. Okay, so now that can just sit to the side. Now I'm going to grab uh, a needle and thread. This uh, is going to become the arm, so we're going to just leave that where it is. And I'm going to just take a needle and thread. You could use uh, more of the same uh, yarn that the um, that the bear is knitted from, but I quite like working with a thinner yarn for shaping the uh, stitching the body, front, and legs. So now what I'm going to do is that same uh, baseball stitch back and forth from the gap. And I'm going to unroll those a bit. And I'm going to make those stitches. There's not very many stitches because there's only the four rows there to for the body which doesn't sound like much, but it really is enough. Okay, and I'm stitching right up to the next two safety pins. And I, it's really important that you mark both ends of that row so that you do know that you are ending your stitching. See when I pull up? You can't see it. Okay, that um, when you reach those two ends of those that row you know you're you're perfectly lined up because you've got a pin at each end. Now I'm going to take another little bit of stuffing. It doesn't really take a lot and I'm going to stuff I'm leaving this part open and I'm not going to stuff too too much in there. Just you'll get a feel for the right amount. And now I'm going to fold this bit of yarn down the tail from the beginning down to the body and I'm going to fold over so I can get the exact center here and I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to pick up the exact center of the cast on row and I'm going to stitch back and forth 
to pull that in and that forms the top of each leg. So now you work, you stitch back and forth across. Again, working over the gap, pulling up very hard to close it. Oops. There you go. And bring your needle down to the center so that you can now work and tuck on that to kind of put a little bit of a curve in there. And now you can close the second leg, again working from the gap back and forwards. up to the tip of the toe. And you're going to pull on that. You want that quite tight. Did you hear it kind of give a little squeak? And there's a bit of stuffing sticking out there. I will tuck that in with my um, felting needle afterwards if it's still sticking out. So I'm going to go back in, take my needle out at the center and just, I'm going to now just secure by stitching in place a couple of times. Then I'm going to go through to the back and I'll just take, I'll just go over another stitch a couple of times. Just, I, I really like to secure things. And then I'm going to come out, grab my scissors and snip. Now my Oh, there. So I'm going to give a bit of a squeeze and a twist so that the legs are, I want the legs to be pretty equal. So I'm using the tip of the needle to make the those little legs um, equal. And I'm going to push down on the head a little bit. So now I'm going to do the, where did I put the crochet hook. Oh, there it is. So I've got the yarn for the arm coming out at the shoulder here. I'm going to insert my hook into a stitch uh, at the shoulder and pull it through. And I'm going to chain quite not, not a tight chain, uh, seven or eight uh, chain stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm going to come over to the um, to the arm uh, to the other shoulder, and I'm going to um, just leave, I'm moving the needle down to the end there because it was in the way. And now I'm going to pick up, I took the yarn over and I'm going to come through and now I'm going to chain across, not chain, pardon me, slip stitch. So you go in and you go along your um, your chain there, slipping, pushing the hook through, yarn over and through, push the yarn through, yarn over and through, push the yarn through. Oh, I, I might as well have taken the needle off at the beginning. Uh, and now I'm going to take the yarn through and um, I don't want to pull up too tightly. Now I'm going to rethread it. Sometimes I can just leave it on and it's fine and sometimes not. So this now I stitch through the body of the bear and through that last chain loop 
and I like to make a couple of stitches through here and then I take the needle into the bear's body and I've pulled that out again and I pull it through and then I work it back and now this is when I use the um, felting needle to just secure that stitch. So just grab a felting needle and I just lock that last stitch in, lock this stitch in. If this ear looks kind of funny, it's twisted a bit, so I just do a little here, let's come down closer. Just a little bit of tappity tap there just to get that in. Make it nice. Lock that in at the top. Okay, and so there. Let's go back up a bit. So there the arms and legs are done. So the next thing to do is to grab the beads and I'm going to just wear <laughs> I have to find where I put the here I have my black thread so what I will do is I'm going to go straight into the back of the head and I'm going to um, bring the needle out oh sorry that's not in focus okay there okay Let's move that out of the way. Does that help? Okay, it's quite a small needle so that it can go through the beads. And I'm going through the center, the midline of the head. I'm going to pull uh, the thread through the head, but I'm going to leave just a little bit so I know I'm, I'm not going to pull all the way through. Now I'm going to lock the thread in place for the nose by taking two tiny stitches at the middle there. And now I'm going to do, see how there's several, this guy has even a bigger nose. Um, the, I'm going to now um, do several horizontal stitches for the bear's nose. So I use four strands of sewing machine thread held together. Well, I put two strands through the needle and fold it, and that gives me the four strands. And, or you can use six strands of embroidery floss, you know, um, whatever you like. And so I just keep stitching in place until I am happy with that little nose. And now I'm going to go down through the nose and come out just below the nose a little bit down from there and take a couple of wee little stitches also horizontal stitches to make the mouth there we go don't want as many stitches in the mouth as you have in the nose. Now go up from your mouth just a little bit above and a little bit to one side for the first eye. And I'll grab a, a, a bead. Now I'm going to stitch the bead onto the Comfort Bears and I'll stitch several times. If you're going to give this comfort bear to a young child, please don't use beads. Um, use um, French knots because you don't want uh, to risk a child um, biting the bead off and choking. So. There we go, pick up that bead, and now the second bead goes on 
in a second. I want to make sure I'm holding my needle up there so I know exactly where I want to go in for the second eye. And I stitch that on firmly in place. Ugh. I just made a knot. Ook. Okay, so stitching firmly in place. Okay, and now I'm going to go down into the nose and I'm going to use the nose to anchor the stitching from the eyes. So I take a couple more stitches over the nose and I go in at the very corner of the nose there and do like a teeny tiny, two teeny tiny stitches to just secure that really well. And then I go in, under, and through the nose, and I come out at the back, and you can, if you want, you can take a teeny tiny stitch at the back too, and just, and then come out again and snip and trim the first one. And I like to kind of squish the head down a little bit. And there is, oh, he's not showing up too well, but um, yeah, it's a bit dark, but every face will be unique. And I'm just going to talk to you a bit about the, um, about the panda bears. Now, the thing about all three, four of these bears were all, I knitted them all with um, yarn that said number four medium worsted, all on my um, five millimeter needles. And yet look at the different sizes. So this is obviously a uh, thicker, you know, these two are thicker and these two are, you know, not quite so thick. But anyhow, every bear, no matter, I've knitted, crochet, and woven thousands of comfort bears over, um, many thousands of bears over the 21 years, 22, 23 years now that I've been making the comfort bears. And the, um, the, this has become my signatures that the fat that they can hug with their, the little onesie arm get, makes them so huggable. Now, I just, uh, the pattern for the panda, exactly the same pattern as uh, the one color bear. And the knitting pattern will tell you that, uh, like the written pattern, that again, you start at the feet, six rows of black yarn, two rows of white yarn, two rows of black yarn, six rows of white yarn. Now, the, the difference between this bear and the, like the panda and this bear is that I, when I finished the knitting these two rows, I brought the yarn, I joined uh, the white for the next row, and I brought the black yarn out through the side of the bear and then I cut my 40 inches of the black yarn so that and I would actually um, I, I recommend going to 42 inches because boy I found that I was really with the patches on this particular one um, I was you know scrambling to get that last bit of patch done so um, with uh, the uh, pandas you bring your yarn out here um, you'll gather the top of the bear's head with the white yarn and stitch down to here and make the uh, neck in the same way as this bear using the white thread. And then you'll take your um, 
once you have sewn your bear up and done the legs right down to the body then you'll do your arms in with the black and um, the head uh, you you'll take your arm yarn back up into the head to make your two ears exactly the same way as these ears were made and then to do the I'm hoping that the I'm trying to get the I'm trying to encourage the um, camera to um, focus here so to make the patches you'll just you know make your um, I use the ear yarn to make the patches and that's just three straight embroidery stitches straight stitches vertically to make the patches and then I even use the same um, uh, yarn just to make one stitch with the nose and one stitch with for the mouth and then I sewed the beads on to make the eyes and um, that's how you make the pandas. And of course pandas, um, children's teddy bears aren't always black and white. Uh, sometimes they're blue and pink and turquoise and um, this, uh, these little guys, I did French knots for their eyes and it makes this little guy look like, like she's fast asleep with her little eyes barely open. Um, so I hope you'll have a wonderful time making comfort bears. It's a great way to use up little scraps of yarn. And the thing that's important is always keep one with you in your pocket for yourself for comfort and one to give to someone else because people, people right now are going through, it's been a tough few years and people need love and connection and comfort. And, um, if you have a loved one who, like us, we've lost um, this beloved family member, and do it as a legacy in memory of them. And also, to look around your community. Um, is there a padre, a chaplain, a rabbi, a, um, you know, um, some a spiritual leader, uh, an imam, you know, someone who, uh, you know, a chaplain at, at the hospital? Uh, or, um, you know, an end-of-life doula who, or at the sexual assault center or the women's shelter, make, offer to make them comfort bears too. And, um, you know, um, first responders, they can sure use comfort bears to give to their patients and clients. And teachers too, they can sure use them in the classroom. So, Please um, be well, be safe, and most of all, be kind. Uh, life is short, it's full of mystery, and uh, sometimes it brings suffering. And so this is one way of dealing with that suffering. So go gently, my friends. Hugs and kisses and love from me and mine to you and yours. Blessings. Happy knitting. I'm going to leave you with one last request. Well, a couple of last requests. One is that you do make these bears, the comfort bears, the comfort clancy bears, um, and that you do give them freely to other people. But please, it's really important that this is a gift of love. You know, I've put a huge amount of work into it, and so I'd really appreciate if you would not sell the bears. They're not intended to be sold. And also, if you could give me credit, I appreciate that and send people to my YouTube and to my blog. So, thanks again and yeah, once upon a comfort bear. Good things happened. Blessings.